You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life. You get a lot of reverb. Right. So we are recording now. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're in business. Uh, hey, everybody, thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. I'm here with uh, with John Props and his wife. Oh, excuse me. That's okay. See, when it's in my phone and it, it's spelled, that I think it looks like Props. It, yeah, Props. Props. With probes. an E. Mm-hmm. And uh, John, I'll let, you, I'll let you introduce yourself and your wife and what you guys do. Yeah, uh, my name's John and Kathy, my wife. Uh, she actually owns Oldies But Goodies Antiques. We're both in it together. We love it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yep. And, uh, and guys, this is, uh, Hip and Humble. Um, I didn't mention that beforehand, but this is what it is. Uh, we actually have a, a shop or a booth here in Oldies But Goodies and, uh, and I wanted to come in and uh, kind of get some more insight from the from the owners here. They're they're great people and a lot of fun to work with. And it seems like they have a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, that's not the word. I mean, it's just you couldn't imagine. My wife always says she's living the dream mm. by working here, and she really is. And the old saying is, if you're doing something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's right. true. We found that to be true here. And then having vendors such as yourself, mm. Aram, and your family here, that's beautiful. I mean, it's just what makes it a part of this antique business, the mall, having mm-hmm. an antique mall. Well, I found, too, it's a, it's a very intimate thing. You know, the, the relationships that you form, the people that you meet, the friendships that you do have, especially with just within – I mean, it's a business, but, it you know, it is, it's a family of people. Yeah. We, my wife always refers to it as our family, mm-hmm. and I'm almost – I uh, have to stop her sometimes saying, well, don't refer to it too much. You'll think we're a cult, you know, passing <laughs> out the Kool-Aid. But it's just that fun. Yeah. And like you said, that intimate with uh, everybody here. We just treat them that way, and they feel comfortable here. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we'll have them work, help out uh, different people that are here. But, yeah, but business is fun. Yeah, and I think the most part uh, for us, it's the people that we come across and meet. Mm-hmm. And when they come in the store and they find something that either they once had or yeah. they were looking for and couldn't find. We had a lady last month, uh, she broke down in tears and we, we didn't know what was going on. I mean, she really? just literally lost it, but she found her mother's, um, and was that a, your, uh, family's booth? Was it, it was, now? Yes. It was an Iris, um, 1950s, um, glass set. Wow. And with a picture and a platter and everything, and she had been looking for that. That's incredible. That reminds me. So just last week, um, uh, one of my one of my good friends actually purchased one of our antique books off of our Etsy site, and he was looking through the pages after he got it, and he found out the original owner was one of the shop owners here down in downtown Fredericksburg. He went to the shop, but the guy still worked there, and he ended up giving the book right back to him. It was a family heirloom, been passed down a couple of generations, but they had lost it. Uh, we we had gotten it gotten it in an auction in Fairfax, uh, I want to say a couple a couple months ago, but and it was just incredible to see. You know, he, he shared, he got a picture with the guy, and you know, the guy was was just overjoyed, and man, that was just it, so cool. Well, to see. Well, again, we had a girl, yeah, um, two weeks ago. And we had a scrapbook mm. of a family, yeah. and she was intrigued by it. And it's probably about a hundred years old, mm-hmm. and she looked some of the people up in the scrapbook and found uh, one of the great grandsons. Wow. Contacted him, and said, "Hey, look what I got your family scrapbook." Anyway, he was just overjoyed. 
willing to pay whatever it would take to get it. And she said, no, just pay for the scrapbook. I'll take care of the shipping. Mm -hmm. It just is a joy uh, for me to get, you know, find this and get it back to you. Oh, for sure. So that's a lot of the things that happen here. Yeah. I think, I mean, real uh, antiques are memories, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, reminders of things past. I think that you know, that's one of the reasons I started the podcast because there's so many different interesting antiques and, uh, you know, normally, uh, when I'm not doing, when we're not interviewing wonderful people such as yourself, I, my mom well, and I thank you. Will, will talk about, uh, a different, uh, genre area in history and we'll talk about the different antiques that have come out of it. And, uh, and I, I love that because it, it really does, it gives a more full picture of, of, uh, and a more personable picture of how people used to live and used to do things and the things they used to use. And I think, you know, each antique, and I'll, we're sitting in the shop here and I'm looking up at all the, you know, the different, uh, saws and things like that that you guys have, that some people have hanging in their booth. And, and they're just, they're, they're, they really are memories from, from a previous time. And I think that's, that's just such an interesting, you know, perspective to have whenever you're looking at things. I mean, people say not to place as much, you know, cloud and material things, but they do have purpose and they, they do have memories. Uh, yeah, I would definitely say so. And, you know, just not antiques, but collectibles. People yeah. really have fun with that, mm-hmm. that aspect. Um, I come in, we find people that come into the store looking to, get started like in a coin or a paper money collection oh yeah and then they uh, compliment us on the time that we give them on how to go about that where to get the proper books Mm -hmm. and yes you can go online but sometimes a book is a little better uh, when you're dealing with that because it's easier to look up I think a book and also uh, for me, I, I like tribal knowledge. I'm the kind of person I like to talk to people and figure out what they know. You know, I'm, I'm that kind of I'm very sociable, so I like to uh, talk to people like you and, and other people that, that know the different collections and so on to figure out, you know, who's looking for what and so on. I think it's just it's just neat. It gives you something to focus on that's not uh, not necessarily chaotic like a lot of the rest of life is. That's true, too. When you come here, it's... Uh Nothing that you're coming for. There's not a necessity. Right. It's uh, an experience. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. That's a great way to put it. And, you know, we try to create an environment here that's fun, fun, loving, and uh, people enjoy it. And we get the feedback. Mm-hmm. And th- that's what really makes it so great when we say we love what we do. Oh, yeah. And I just think it's the people that give us the feedback. It's mm-hmm. almost like being on stage. Yeah. You know, and they're coming back saying, hey, we love the way you have your store and your vendors here. Mm-hmm. And we love, you know, the product. And now you say, I mean, it's like being on a stage. I completely agree. I mean, you think about, uh, you know, what Shakespeare said, you know, everyone's a, everyone's a player in the world is your stage. And I think that from a philosophical perspective, this shop is definitely your stage in, in more ways than one. You know, I think that you guys have put so much into it. And I think that. I think that it's fantastic. I'm I'm really grateful to be a part of it. I know that. For and sure. we're, hey, we're grateful to have you and your family. Yeah. I tell you, because you all are really into it. Yeah. And um, that's what we look for: is people that really are into going out, finding the new find, mm-hmm. you know, hunting, and what's the treasure that lies around the corner or the bend or underneath. Right. And it's an adventure. It's and an it's an adventure. adventure, yeah. Yeah, to, absolutely. To find those treasures. And then to find the treasures that mean things to people that come into the shop. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. What's, uh, what would you say the most interesting collection that you've seen or that you've seen someone collect? I've seen a lot of collections. I've been fortunate enough to have been in homes that almost look like museums. Wow. And would make some of the antique shops look pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people really really gotten into it and one that comes to mind right away is oyster can collection oyster Um, can oyster cans wow they it's a small group that collect but virginia maryland has been known for the world Mm -hmm. uh, to produce the amount of oysters that we produce especially in the late 1800s early 1900s uh-huh. And we would ship them around the world. You could pave roads with the oyster shells. Wow. But the Chesapeake Bay just was the most uh, productive oyster right. in place. So there was tons of packing companies all along the bay and mm-hmm. the river. 
and people collect those cans that they ship the oysters in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have different graphics. A lot of them are older. They had, it's like a paint uh, gallon can. Oh, oh! It's like, so a it's, gallon. Like, like a, it's a pretty big can. Though. Yeah, it's a gallon can. And yeah, they, I, I've never, I've never seen an they oyster would ship can. Those two restaurants, um, wow. eateries, and then they would also have the little pints and the half pints for the stores. That kind of that kind of reminds me uh, when I was in the Navy, I was on submarines, you know, and and we had these. So they call submariners termites because whenever we load up with stores, load up with food. Um, we have these big tin cans, are about five gallon tin cans, and they're, they're they're square cans. So they have a round top, but they're square, and so they'll fit two or three of them in a row, and they'll put them along the walkways, and then they'll put boards on top of them. So you get two, three, four, five layers of flour, sugar, you know, whatever it is in these cans, and then we walk across them, and of course, you know, as we use them, then you know you take them out, and by the end of deployment or the end of you know whatever underwear, you've eaten your way all the way down to the floor. So. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I said I've never, I've never seen those oyster cans. Yeah, we have a couple. I'll show you later in the shop. Oh, please, yeah, yeah. You probably just overlooked them. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, and um, but they're neat because they have different designs, and then people in the area will say, "Okay, I'm from that part of Virginia or that part of Maryland, or my grandfather was into the oystering, yeah. and he remembers that company." So they're collecting them for all different reasons, or just to have them. Wow. So it is a pretty neat market. Um, but, yeah, we've seen a lot of vendors bring in different World War II, World War I collections. Right. Yeah. And there's, they're neat as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think World War II is, it's, I mean, it's a very heavily, I would say, scrutinized period of history, I think. You know, I think a lot of people studied it. A lot of studies have been done. Papers have been written, so on and so forth. Not to say it's... Uh, uh, overwashed, but uh, you know, I, I think that it's it's a it's a very unique period in history, and I think that's why a lot of people go back to it con- consistently. They do, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> very much so. And then, like I said, again, there's you you go back just not the history, but you have collectibles, yeah, here, yeah. and and they're fine. They're, that's just a fun thing. Could mm-hmm. be Zippo lighters, yeah. Uh, could be pocket knives. Yeah, or pins. My, uh, pins. My mom actually, I guess she was working the front desk here one, uh, a couple of weeks back and she said some kid had come in, um, looking at, uh, one of the booths here that had all of the World War II memorabilia and, uh, he picked up a, a, a Nazi pin and he was gonna, he, he'd taken it up to her and said, oh, I think this would make a great necklace. And my mom was like, uh, do you know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> and she, she told him, she said, I didn't mean to lose a sale or anything, but he did not know what he was doing. <laughs> so right. I, I right. had to let her know. You know, I, I think that's another interesting thing, kind of along the lines of what I was talking about before, where, you know, the, these things tell a story. And I think knowing the story behind them gives them more value. They do. Yeah. They do. A lot of people come in and, and want to know. They'll say, does this have a story? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. some things that we have here, we can share that. And mm-hmm. some, we have to tell them we don't really know. Yeah. You yeah know, it's almost like they have a personality. The story, yeah. I've held a couple things. I have a pocket watch, and that's one of my things, pocket watches, that I really like and get into. Mm-hmm. I have one that's not really what you would call high end or anything special. Yeah. But something about that watch is the way it feels in my hand. Um, it keeps very good time. It's a little over 100 years old. Um, mm-hmm. It's, like I said, it's nothing special as far as a watch. It's only gold plated case, uh-huh. 17 jewels. It's not a 21. But what I'm trying to get to is that. I feel that there's something about that watch, and I'd really like to know, yeah. you know, what the history was or mm-hmm. whose hands was this watch in. Yeah. Because I'm feeling a connection to the watch, and I really just like that watch, and I, it feels good for me to have yeah. that watch, yeah. even though it's not the Rolex of watches. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but I think that it, I don't. I don't think something necessarily has to be a brand name for it to be special. And to that, someone. that's yeah. my point. Yeah, and I really think there's a lot, a lot of history behind that. It would yeah. be, it would be really neat, and maybe it's imaginary, but it's just this a feeling that comes across you. Oh, it sounds like we got an idea for one of our one of our upcoming episodes, and we'll have to look into 
look into the history behind uh, some pocket watches, see if we can find yours. Right, right. Yeah, you have to send me a picture of it. I'm going to let Kathy um, also tell you a little bit about her experience here because she just overly joyed. She's here full time. Yeah. And it's her store. Uh, it is our store, but it's registered in her name. Yeah. She's the front, you know, person. And uh, she can tell you some stories that I just didn't cover t- today. Yeah. Especially about coming, people coming in, finding some of the things that they were really surprised of. And mm-hmm. um, so I'm going to turn it over to her for oh, yeah, a yeah. minute. No problem. Hello, everyone. Hey, how's it going? Good. All right. So we were just uh, bragging on your store here for a little while. Mm-hmm. Yes, this is a wonderful opportunity that that I have. Uh, Not too many people get to live their dream. Yeah. And it's just so special to me and John that we we just love it. And the people that we get to meet and opportunities that stories we get to hear about these items that come into the store... And then we get to pass that on to the um, the customer mm-hmm. and because they love stories. We have people that will buy things, and then they'll call up later on and say, can you find any information on this, the history of it? Right. And so a lot of times we will um, talk to the vendor and mm-hmm. see if they have any history or if they can find some. And we'll call back the customer and let them know yeah. um, what we've found out. And they're so excited about that. Now, not always can we find um, information on the items because they're, they are bought through estates or right. auctions. Mm-hmm. But um, they just l- love when we can give them some type of history and they yeah. get excited. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's the only thing I would say that it is some kind of, sometimes mm-hmm. disheartening is a lot of the stuff that we do get we get through auctions and uh, estate sales and and obviously as people going through estate sales a lot of people like to remain like to remain anonymous they don't they don't want uh, all their information mm-hmm. out there because people you know get rid of all their stuff for lots and lots of different reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, one story I wanted to uh, mention. Yeah. <clears throat> is there was a grandson that came in and he saw a duck decoy Mm -hmm. and he looked at it and he found out that it was uh his great his his great grandfather's duck yeah and he was so excited about it because it had his name on it and he can kind of um he recognized the design and he, I mean, it was almost tears in his eyes uh-huh. that he had to have this duck decoy because it was his, it was either his grandfather's or great grandfather's. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, my, my grandfather, he, he died last year. Um, he died last year around January, uh, just before Catherine and I got married, actually. And that was a, that was a hard time, obviously, for me and for, you know, for my family. Um, but, but to be able to have things of his or to find something of his later down the road, I, he gave me a few jackets. Uh, he was a, mm-hmm. he was a, about my size, a little shorter, and he was 170 pounds, 172 pounds from the day he turned 18 till the day he died. Wow. Yeah, he was a, he was a very lean guy. He was, he was really young. I, I remember him telling stories about going to his college. He went to OSU in Oklahoma. Oklahoma State University, and uh, well into his 40s, he would wear his Letterman jacket and get a student discount going to the games. <laughs> yeah, he's just—he was just a—he was a good guy, and uh, you know we, we miss him. But I—I I, I think I understand that connection to those kinds of things um, better now. Right. <laughs> you know, they say or we talked about one of our previous episodes. A lot of beauty comes from tragedy. You know, a lot of understanding comes from pain. And uh, I definitely, I definitely think that's true. And, and I think that, you know, seeing the seeing seeing those things or being able to correlate those items with people, it kind of brings you joy in a way. It kind of makes mm-hmm. you feel like you're a little bit closer to them. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, in in the um the customer that bought the de- decoy, he was from New Jersey. And we get a lot of out um out of towns people that come in because of the area that we're in. For uh, for reference, we're in uh we're in we're in Fredericksburg, Virginia, so out of towns anywhere outside of here. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, we've had customers that came from um, overseas, Italy and um, uh, Asia. I mean, it just you know. Asia's pretty big. Well, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know what you're talking about. But they, um, a lot of them come, and I mean, it's just from California up to to um, Massachusetts, and Florida. So we get to meet all kinds of t- different types of people, mm-hmm. and it gets exciting when we get to talk to them, and they tell us stories about their grandparents and how they had different items that they see in the store, and it brings yeah. back memories. And that's what we like to do is is have them um, experience the adventure of going back into t- time and seeing things that their great grandparents might have had and used and they um, get to feel it and the other op- opportunity that i love is when children come in mm-hmm. and i try to teach teach them something yeah. of, of what's in the store whether it's about the money you know and how to tell that um sorry uh, that's okay <laughs> Um, yeah, so when the children come and, uh, you know, we, uh, if they seem to be interested in money, mm-hmm. then that's what I talk about. And I'll get the book out and show them, you know, how to start collecting, make, mm-hmm. you know, doing their collections. And they're usually start off with something small. Right. Once in a while I do give them, uh, like a silver dime or something like that that mm-hmm. can get them started in their collection and they're yeah. so excited about that and uh, we get a lot of repeat customers because we do take the time out to um, welcome them and, yeah. and no I mean that's what we were talking about earlier you guys really do cultivate an experience I think this shop is uh, is very unique and special in that way mm-hmm. uh, I mean like I said earlier I, I've loved being a part of it and I, I do like seeing the way you interact with people. I think part of that is, uh, you know, just this area. I think a lot of people in this area are very welcoming, mm-hmm. um, very nice people. And, and, uh, and, and yeah, I, I definitely think that that's, that's what you do. You create an experience, and that brings back, brings people back because they want to see you. Right. Yeah. We, and we, yeah, we have, we have, like, tons of fun with people. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you can tell the ones that are um, wanting to have the fun with you yeah and it's just you just play with them they play with you back and that's some of the joy too Mm -hmm. and i've got a smile on my face right now just thinking about it because a lot of times you're joking with them Mm -hmm. and you know and they'll say something you'll say no you're not (laughs) serious about that and they'll be look at you with a strange face and and I'll say, come on now, you know, <laughs> your husband's treating you to all this stuff here now. I hope you're taking care of him at home. That's for sure, you know. <laughs> and then they'll get the laughing and everything. And well, you got to add a little bit of levity, right? Oh, we we <laughs> and we have a blast with people, and and not everybody likes that, of course. But you can well, kind of yeah. read and tell. you got to gauge people. Yeah, yeah, you gauge. I was it. A, I was a server at um, Cracker Barrel, and uh, you know, you've met my parents, so you know, I I, I try to be funny sometimes. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but uh, every every table or so, I do these different jokes. Uh, of course, my name's Aram, so uh, nobody pronounces it right usually when, about the first time. So, I'd uh, I'd say Aram. People say, how do, you know, how do you spell that? I say very carefully. I had a, <laughs> I had a couple different jokes I lined up, and uh, this one table came in, and you know, everybody's got this one table stories. Everybody who's been a server, they know like they this one table. But anyways, this one table came in. And they sat down, and I told my usual round of jokes, and I was getting kind of sassy with them, and, and he started getting mad. Mm-hmm. I mean, mad, mad, to where he was like, um, it seems like you're really intelligent, but you're bored, and you have nothing to do, so you seem to be insulting us. I'm like, oh, I am, I did not mean to do that. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I, I was just joking around. I, I, I didn't, un- didn't understand that my humor was not coming across as humor. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 You have to watch it. But I tell you, I, that's one of my things that I, we just have fun. And a lot of times I'll, we'll find Kathy and I, uh, we're going to be a personal assistant to some people when they come in looking for decorations for their house. Yeah. And they want the nice crystal or they want, uh, vases that are mm-hmm. from the late 1800s yeah a lot of the accent pieces you know i yeah. think i think for 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 catherine and i i mean obviously we have more antiques than the average bear but i think one of the things that really got me into it besides my mother was uh just the, i love i love being able to put the smaller pieces around the house it kind of gives it a little just a little something it does you know, a it little does. a little extra makes you it makes your house look a little more homey yeah, even if it's a jar of marbles. Yeah. And I know your family loves marbles. Oh, oh, my mom is a marble freak. Yeah, you put a <laughs> jar of marbles up on the counter and it makes a world of difference or an old mason jar. Mm-hmm. It attracts the eye. And when people come to your home, yep. they're like, wow, what's that? That's pretty cool because it's old and different. Yeah. It's not something you randomly see at Walmart, you know, right. or Target. Right. You know, I mean, not to, not to knock any of the major players or whatnot, but, uh, you know, a lot of the newer accent pieces the you know, the more modern accent pieces uh, i do i i they they're almost less uh, inviting yeah, well, they're generic and, yeah. and they're not unique we look for the unique here mm-hmm. and that that's another thing that we have fun at is when we go out um looking for the uniques yeah and we talked about that earlier we also have people that come in want us to come to their homes and yeah. that's fine yeah Speaking of unique, I just got off the phone with my mom before I got here, and and uh, she found at a Goodwill in Oklahoma um, a vase full of uh, pool balls, and it was like a whole pool set. It was pool balls, the chalk, and I think like a, uh, a score book or something. I don't, so I don't know what. I think it was just pool balls and, and a box of chalk, but the way she described it, I don't think she understood. She knew what the box was, but uh, that was pretty cool. There you go. You know? yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. Those, those little interesting, unique things, that's kind of what you look for on the side. For yeah, sure. the different. And you hear that all the time. People mm-hmm. are looking for that, too. They're saying, I, I want something in my home that stands out. It's mm-hmm. different. Something that's just yours. You know, yeah. I think I think a lot of people, I mean, myself included, you know, struggle with that, that individuality or that, that expression of, uh, you know, personal freedom or, you know, your personal personality, <laughs> personal personality. But, right. uh, you know, I think, I think antiques really do that, especially in a, you know, a home environment. And I love, I love having people over and I love being able to show, you know, show these different interesting things and, and have something to talk about, you know. Definitely conversation pieces. Oh, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if, uh, some people come to the store and they hit on some things that Kathy and I have a passion about. Mm-hmm. We'll be with them, like just like I said, their personal assistant on it, and telling them all about it because you know we just love it too. Oh yeah, and uh, and I'll tell them right off the bat, hey, pocket watches is my thing. Let's go for it. I'll open it up. We'll show you the inside. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you the history, all about it, and and they're fascinated because there is a history there. Yeah, a lot of people like pocket watches don't believe that was a like a status symbol. It yeah. was your car. Absolutely. They yeah. were around before cars. Yeah. And every man had a pocket watch and a lot of ladies. So with someone that had that and everyone had that, it's something in history that uh, really is to be noted, you know, is something unique. Right. They're making a comeback, though. So a lot of people, younger people, are wearing the watches, too, today. And they're doing it, they're going out to special occasions, you know, uh, wearing with a suit a lot of times or without. Yeah. But, then, and it's neat to see that. Cameras, they're making a, uh, a, a big, big, comp- big company. Yeah. Well, I, I know that we were talking about this earlier on one of our earlier uh, episodes, my mom and I, but antiques are great if you're, if you're starting an interest. You know, especially when it comes to cameras, because if you're going to you're going to start getting into cameras, it can be a real expensive hobby real quick. But if you go to an antique shop and you buy maybe an older Canon or an Nikon or 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 what have you, an older film camera, uh, it's a lot cheaper to buy from an antique shop. And and a lot of times you learn the basics a lot better because it's you know, there's. There's less features, so there's less for you to mess with. There's less for you to mess up. 
and uh, there, you have to be more precise and, and so on with your with the way that you take photos. So I, I think that if you're starting an interest or a passion or, or you know, something like that, going and looking for antique pieces to to begin those kinds of things, like sewing too. Sewing's another one. It is. Yeah, getting an antique sewing machine or or sewing kits, things like that. Typewriters. We're Typewriters. finding people want to have that experience with a manual. Mm-hmm. They don't want it, the electric. They want the manual. They want the experience. Well, it's, I think you know. I think it's a it's a it's a break from the norm, you know, because. I mean, with my with my day job, I you know I type all day, all yeah. day every day I type, and so you know being able to go from you know just the the different keyboards that I use throughout the day to a typewriter, it's just it's a break from your normal reality, I think. Yeah, it's a break. Um, record players and mm-hmm. records. Yeah, I think one of the reasons they're becoming so more popular. Um, it's easy to hit you know a CD player and walk away. A mm-hmm. record, you actually have to be intimate with it to a degree. Well, it's an experience, and, I think. Yeah, you have to take it out. You have to look at the cover. Um, you have to place it on the record player. Mm-hmm. Put the needle just right. Is tune everything right? in. So, like you said, it's an experience, and it's mm-hmm. a you. You have to. You're there, and then you're going to sit down. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to listen to it. There's a ritual to it. You know, I I love records. I have a I have a decent rate a decent. Uh, record collection myself I, it's not impressive by any means but it, it's it's getting there and um my last record player actually broke i need to get a new record player there you go <laughs> but uh but yeah no it, it really is there's there's a like it's or i could just set it oh, like a procedure to it so it gets you involved it's very visceral and i think you definitely feel like you're there whenever you're listening to music especially live albums on vinyl those are, oh yeah, those are those are pretty incredible. If anybody's ever watched like Pawn Stars, we're not a pawn shop. No, but the similarity is is that you're going to go there, and it's not your average pawn shop. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have that that connection, right? That, just like you do with the Pawn Stars. Right, you can see that it's a a one to one with the people behind the counter right um same here we want to give that to you so if we you know i want to invite everybody that's listening to come down and you know see us and visit us absolutely well another thing too is that you comparatively to a pawn shop like the stuff here is of a higher quality and a lot of it's a lot of it's refurbished or uh or redone i I know for for our booth specifically you know that's uh, we we a lot of the furniture and things like get that we get we get Furniture that's you know been used pretty well and has you know some nicks and things and and we'll sit there and we'll fix it up before we come and put it out. So we put a lot of time and effort into it. So a lot of the you know all of the the pieces here they're they're I would say of a higher quality than uh, your average pawn shop. True, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But I was referring to the show, the Pawn Stars. Oh yeah, 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 and the where you get that intimate experience. Oh right. Um, and that's what you're going to get here with us. We're going to joke with you. Mm-hmm. We're going to be your personal assistant if you need it. Yeah. And you're just going to come in and feel great. You really will. I got great music. We get tons of compliments on that. You do have great music. Yeah, it takes great you back. Music. Uh, it's we, par- we primarily turn, a doo wop. We turned we turned it off before we started the podcast just because we didn't want to talk over it. But man, it was a good song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we got to people, we find people dancing upstairs and in mm-hmm. the hallways. Yeah. But it's nice. It's fun. And we're just totally excited. We purchased a store a little over a year ago. Uh-huh. Um, before that, we were like you all in booths, mm-hmm. um, which is a perfect opportunity to get started if you want to actually do the business. Yeah. So, yeah, speaking of that, uh, speaking about experience and all that, how did you guys get started? Well, basically, um, we always liked antiques, yeah. uh, appreciated them, mm-hmm. and uh, my grandmother unfortunately passed away right. um, a few years ago, and oh, sorry to hear that. we had to clean up uh, at her house, mm. and in the process, we found ourselves going to antique shops because she did have a lot of older items of value, right? and we were selling them to them. And I don't know, it's just like, okay, what else would you need? And then it was like, let me go find that maybe at a flea market, see if I could 
It yeah. was like a challenging thing. Uh, I have to give some credit, Kathy and I both watching American Pickers, and we said, "I was just about to mention that we don't really <laughs> know a lot about this." But and this went when it first got started about ten years ago. Yeah, um, but that's something we could do. Yeah, and for those of you guys that don't know, American Pickers is a show. It was on uh, Discovery Channel, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was on Discovery Channel. But uh, yeah, I did. I think it started airing. It was either ten or twelve years ago. Yeah. Something like that. And they just go around, hunt, find mm-hmm. um, items to um, that people were looking for. You know, just same thing that we're doing here. Um, and so, yeah, that getting into the business is, is just an experience in itself. And, you know, we really didn't touch too much on that. No, no. You know. That's all I was saying. Let's get into it. Right. So... We found we were doing that, and one thing led to another. I didn't have two dimes to rub together, mm. literally. Yeah. Had kids at home, and we just leaped at the opportunity to get a small booth oh. and started with that, and then the strategy of trying to make the booth work. Mm-hmm. What do people want? How do we price it? Yeah. And trying to get mentors, and people would help us out, other vendors. We would go to them. And say, what do we need to do to, you know, what kind of stuff do we need to get? What are people, what are they liking? What are they into? And one thing led to another, and we were into it so much, uh, one of the stores we were in, the owner asked my wife to manage one of his newer stores that he was opening up. Oh, wow. An antique store. Was that around this area? Yes, it was in Port Royal, Virginia. Oh, very nice. Uh, It's called Port Royal Trading Post, and Kathy worked there for three years. And um, she really had a great time and a great experience. And we kind of knew just before that, you know, we got to get a store of our own just just for the experience. Yeah, well, it's like you said, if you find something you love, you got to do it. And you'll never work a day in your life. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're tired at the end of the day or you worked hard, but you just don't feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, I know that's that's why that's why I started doing this. And that's why, you know, my mom and I started doing the antiques together is because it's it's something that we've always loved doing together. And and I've always loved talking. And, you know, her and I talk all the time. So, you know, why not share it and why not share what we love with everybody else? Having vendors like you is is what also, the you know, the reward comes from and a pleasure. It's, I mean, your family's just awesome. And oh, like I said, again, you, you're, you're into it. Right. And you're actively, and that's the whole thing too. A lot of people come in as vendors and they're selling off maybe their family stuff like mm-hmm. I was yeah. in the beginning. But I didn't have a booth to do, to do that. Right. But. You all are actively out there hunting the treasure. Just mm-hmm. the whole experience, I know, is good for you and your family. Yeah. And no, I think it, well, not I think, I know it, it brings us closer. You know, I, as uh, as I've gotten older, um, you know, gotten married, I, I realize, you know, as you, as you get older, get married, you realize you got to make priorities. You have to, you have to make time for the people that you want in your life because, I mean, it's work and, uh, other responsibilities, you know, we got dogs and cats and all that good stuff. Oh, we just just made a garden, started planting a garden, all these different things. You know, with all the different stuff that I pour my time into, it's very it'd be very easy for me to just you know not go anywhere, just focus on all those other things. But right, right, you have to. You have to make priorities to, for people. You have to make that a priority. Um, and you also. The other side of, too, we didn't talk about is uh, when you are a dealer or a vendor, uh, the business aspect. Yeah. You can, you're, you have a hobby because you like it. You love it in a lot of aspects. And there you have a hobby that pays for itself. Well, I mean, I mean, well, getting into the business side of it, it, it's a hobby, but it's also, it's also a lot of critical thinking. It, and I think that that's why it's so interesting because I remember what, we were talking about it last week um, when you were saying how how fun it was to kind of figure out what people were buying, where to place stuff, things like that. I think that strategy and that you know that critical thinking is what propels you know that's what propels me to to move forward with it because I just I do find it so interesting to I there's just see tons how people of strategy. Really yes, if you want to do well at it, yeah, and. Um, yeah, the strategy I think is one of, again it's one of the big things that 
draws me. It's the people. It's mm-hmm. it's just everything. Uh, it's a combination. I, I you know it's hard to put one thing. Uh, what you like or love about the business? I I think it's the people overall would be yeah. the top. Uh, well, I think that's anywhere. You know, I, I read an article a while back that was talking about uh, people and their jobs, and you know, a lot of people they're very you know discontented with where they work. And I guess not, I guess, but the article was suggested it's a very common theme, especially in the U.S., which is interesting. Um, and it touched on that a little bit more, but the main point of the article was that people normally don't leave jobs because of the work itself. You know, most people can tolerate most kinds of work. They leave jobs because of the people there, because of their boss. They don't necessarily leave jobs, they leave managers. Yeah, I would have to agree. Mm-hmm. Being uh, 56 years old and out in the workforce, mm-hmm. I would definitely have to agree that's yeah. probably the number one reason people leave. Yeah. Um I've heard stories over and over, experienced some of my own. Um, but again, when you come into something like this, um, it's so fun. It's it's really not a business. It's more of a hobby because you're so active in it and pursuing it. And you're putting money out, but then you're you're reaping money back. Mm-hmm. And it's a hobby that pays for itself. Yeah. So I ask people, where can you find hobbies that pay for themselves? They yeah. usually take a lot of money and it could be anything simple hobby wise and yeah. they, they really do take a lot of money out of a family or a person oh yeah person's uh, uh, income and for for example from from me i i love motorcycles my dad and i my dad and i ride now my little brother rides we're trying to get my other little brother to get one soon and you know that's just something that we love and you know working on motorcycles buying different the different parts and so on and so forth it can get expensive real quick but it sucks you in because at first it's not that bad so you can get you could get a, a motorcycle that that runs but is old that you could take apart and tinker with you can get one for eight nine hundred bucks but then you know about three months down the road you spent three four grand on different parts and tires and so on and so forth and you know then next thing you know you got another bike you're working on so it just creeps up on you and you know you can tell yourself yeah i'll sell that i'll sell one of the bikes that i refurbished and but you're not going to make back all the money you put into it right and that's again with this you know if you're get good at it and everything make a profit and continue on and continue to grow yeah and get bigger tires and bigger motorcycles yeah and i'm references that into antiques and collectibles you're getting bigger and better right and you found that you were buying a dish and a little pitcher here and um, a little knickknack over there but now you're buying you know signs that are 500 to a thousand a piece right and you're buying all slot machines and things like that and then you're like whoa but you're profiting you're turning a profit you're Mm -hmm. seeing the value there and there again, that's what's fun too. You can grow it into that area. You no, know, it's a succession of things, like you're saying. I mean, you can go, uh, you know, right right now for for us, we're still we're still looking for everything. I mean, we're still trying. Mean, we try to find the best things possible, and and we put work into the things that we do get, so that we can give out the best things that we possibly can. But you know, even so, we're still new. You know, we're still yeah. we're still looking for for the stuff that that people really do like, the stuff that's valuable, that the really collectible and items learning. and the learning. Le- the learning aspect. Uh, Kathy and I learn almost every day. Mm-hmm. Um, there again, we we don't know about everything, and we'll tell our customers. Yeah. Um, well, what are you looking for again? Mm-hmm. And when they say, "Hey, I'm looking for this, that, and the other mm-hmm. thing," and we're like, "Okay, well." We may have it. We'll check with some of our vendors. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we're going to like, hey, let's look that up. Let's see what this is. And, you know. I think it's super underrated to be able to say, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. I think people I think people put a detriment to that phrase. But I, I really do think that, that, you know, that that's propellant because it, it forms a... A time that you're going to spend, you're going to you're going to put time into that person or put time into that thing to look that thing up. Right. Yeah. And that's how we we are here. We're straight out, straight up. And mm-hmm. if we don't know, we're going to try to find out. And there again, it's a learning process for us too to say, hey, <clears throat> let's look more into what these are and the history of them. Yeah. And to continue to learn. Hopefully, we'll just be 
on and on and on with that learning experience. Yeah. I, I can't see anybody uh, really knowing everything about this business because there's no. just a wide range of antiques and collectibles out there. There's there's so much, and I and there's so many different niche niches within it. You know, like you're saying, there's so many different people that collect so many different things. I mean, I just learned about the the oyster the oyster um, cans cans today. <laughs> Right, and and there's that's a neat group that collects those. Yeah, and we use our vendors' knowledge. Mm-hmm. I mean, Buddy um, is one of our vendors here, Updike, and he's a retired auctioneer. Yeah. So I mean, that's pretty and cool. He's job had too, fifty years with antiques. Wow. And we can go to him a lot of times and say, "Hey, Buddy, tell me about this, that, and the other thing." Mm-hmm. There again. Most time he can help us, but there's times it'll say, "Hey, I really don't know." Yeah, you'll find that special tool or something, you know, unique yeah. tool that's 150 years old that nobody's seen. And nobody's seen for 150 uh, right. years, right? And yeah, um, it's like finding a, finding a diamond. Yeah, but the vendors will help us too. Like I said, it's one big family. Yeah, and well, like you said, I mean, when, when whenever you don't know, you always you always reference or. or talk to the vendor to find out if they know the history behind it and so on and so forth to go forward that way you know i think that i think that that's really cool and i think that that's that's what we were talking about earlier forming relationships with people i think that's that's the way to do it you know you invest time in people yeah and people appreciate that yeah um we have a lot of repeat customers and Mm -hmm. even people that are out of town like kathy mentioned earlier they're, they're, when they get back here a year, year and a half later, they're like, yeah, man, I'm so glad to be back and, you know, to your store and to see you all yeah. and to experience this. Hmm. Um, it's just neat. We had a, a lady that was born in Russia. She had been here 20 years um, and knew one heck of a lot about the pieces that she was looking at. And yeah. I asked her, I said, um, these aren't in Russia, right? So how did you, you know, know about this stuff? Hmm. This American, early American antiques. Yeah. She said, "Well, I'm an art teacher, and I also teach, and I oh. learned, you know, over the past 20 years." Wow, that's cool. And that was neat just to uh, have her experience here. Uh, I came, became her personal assistant for a uh, half a day here. And hey, that, there you go. That was fun because she was shopping and mm-hmm. we were going around looking to open up cases and yeah, it's just great. We we, oh, we kind of developed a relationship with her and her husband that we both said, Kathy and I, that uh, we got to hook up with you all and go out to dinner when you come into town next time. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's so cool how you can form those relationships with people that are, you know, Essentially coming in just to just to look at stuff and so on, and then you know you end up becoming really good friends. And that's the thing about you know having a brick and mortar store. Yeah, you don't have to come here. There's not a necessity here, mm-hmm. but people are coming downtown to our store and other stores in the area because it is an antique district. Because mm-hmm. you're going out, you know, it's part of it. Yeah, like it's, it's like experience. We, yeah, that's yeah. what we've been saying this whole time. But yeah, you're you're going out, you're getting an experience, you're meeting new people. You know, and a lot, a lot of people talk about online stuff, which there's a lot of business done, even in the antique world and collectibles online. Yeah. But you're not going to get that experience. And people need to get out. and They, they want to get out. And they want to well, have especially that now. one-to-one. Yes, they, they found out that just online stuff gets a little mundane. Well, I think it's it gets, you know, you're disconnected, too. Because you're you're not talking to real people. I mean, even if you're just going to Target or Walmart, you still say hi to the cashier, right. and you get to touch and feel the items mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean that's not to knock online sales. Of course, no, it definitely not. Yeah, there, there's 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 definitely a time and a place, and it's super convenient. Yes, it is, and you, you can know. find stuff without. Um, and we buy every now and then online uh, because we're not going to. Go to California, but there's an item there we want for our store. Right. I mean, I, I mean, art. We have art. We have our online store too. We have our Etsy shop, Hip and Humble Antiques on on Etsy, and and I think it's great because you know we're, you know we're we're here and we're in Oklahoma, but we're not everywhere. But yeah, we do a bid to win live Facebook, 
yeah. um, auction once a month, usually in the mid month on a Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, guys, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and post these things on our, I always post these events that uh, we have here and, uh, events through, through our store as well on our Facebook page, which is hip and humble on Facebook. Also, I post on changing seasons on, on Facebook, sorry, hip and humble antiques on Facebook. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to like the show and you want to contribute um, and you want to find out about these things a little earlier than everybody else, make sure to go ahead and go on our Patreon page, uh, which is patreon.com slash hip and humble. Um, the link will be up in the description. Um, but, John and Kathy, I just want to thank you guys so much for first taking the time out to talk to me and uh, telling me about you know, this amazing shop and this amazing experience that you guys provide. Um, I'm really grateful for both of you. I, I just want to thank you so much. Well, we'd like to thank you for um, coming here and, and sharing this experience with us. And we, uh, we're we just having fun here. Always. That's what it's all about. Yeah, we look forward to seeing anyone that wants to come down and meet us and um, check store out. And uh, I promise you, you're going to have a good time and have fun. That's right. So, yeah, Aaron, we appreciate you coming by and doing this interview with us. It is absolutely an honor and my pleasure. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Uh, like I said, go ahead and check us out on Hip and Humble Antiques on Facebook. Go to our Patreon, and you know where to find this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and all that. You guys already know all that. But anyways, go ahead and uh, share and like and all that good stuff. If you have a collection, remember to go ahead and post it, comment it, and maybe we'll feature it in one of our episodes. Thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate it. All right. Bye. Whether your business is searching for the latest in innovative IT technology or support in management consulting services and training, Nationwide IT can help. A designated 8A and certified service disabled veteran-owned small business, NIS's mission is to become a trusted partner with you, delivering cost-effective and innovative technology solutions. NIS has a portfolio of contract vehicles to easily access our talents and skills. Visit our website at nw-its.com or call 7 7- 703-750-0453 and let us tell you how we can assist you in meeting your business or operational goals. You're listening to WGSN DB, Going Solo Network, Singles Talk Radio Channel, where we take a lighthearted and candid approach to discussions on the journey of relationship loss, divorce, parenting, being single, relationships building, dating, and yes, sex. Join our listeners and begin living your best life.